Hello, Sid Roth here, and let me tell you something. Most of you are familiar with me if you're watching, but I'm tell you a bit about my background. I'm Jewish, uh, much to the upset of, very, of rabbis. Uh, they say, are both parents Jewish? Hoping I'll say no. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I went to a Jewish DNA specialist and they found out my ancestry goes back to the tribe of Judah. Sorry, rabbis, but I have one of the favorite guests because he has a unique situation that very few people even comprehend. Every year you, <clears throat> you can turn on social media and you'll see Troy Brewer taking the Jewish New Year, which happens to be different than the civil New Year. Why is it different? Uh, because in Hebrew, every number is also a letter and vice versa. In English, every number is not a letter and every letter is not a number. So when you come up with the year, you then can put it in the English language and, you know, Troy Brewer, um, I, I, I find the niche you have found has been fascinating to me over the years. Wow. Um, and I asked a question, I expected a very profound answer, but it wasn't what I was looking for. I said, Troy, how did you get in understanding the numbers of the Bible? How did, how did, did someone teach you? Did someone mentor? How did you get there? I just didn't know any better. <laughs> I, that's what he said to me. <laughs> I was not churched, and I didn't know that that was a taboo subject. I just, I got saved in 1986. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I had an incredible encounter with King Jesus. I, I opened up a Bible. I, I start with the book of Matthew, and then it says that from Abraham to David was 14 generations. From David to the carrying away of Babylon was 14 generations. And then from the carrying away of Babylon uh, all the way up to the Christ is 14. And then I realized, okay, the number 14 represents generational promises. I went through the whole Word of God and I started finding 14s all the way through Scripture and it always means the same thing. So I started studying the numbers just out of the Bible and I didn't know that it was weird until the first time I tried to preach it. it anytime someone sees something that's different, yeah. but what you didn't know at that time, and I know as a Jew, is there are the ancient rabbis did exactly what you did, mm. but there's a difference. They had the Spirit of God on the outside. Mm. Troy Brewer, because he's a believer in the Messiah, has the Spirit of God on the inside. Hallelujah. So when he takes these biblical truths with the Spirit of God, now you've got a combination. For instance, let's take an example. You were telling me, uh, I've, I've interviewed you a number of years yes, sir. Uh, because we're in the Jewish New Year, which is 5785. Yes, sir. Um, uh, and let, uh, 2020, tell me what that showed you and what you prophesied and how it came to pass. <laughs> you will be shocked on this one. Well, you know, whenever we look at the numbers, the numbers themselves actually come from the Hebrew letters because in the Hebrew alphabet, as you and I know, they don't use, you know, they don't use numerals. They actually use the letters. So the Hebrew alphabet has three different values. It has a phonic sound. It also has a numerical value. And then it also has a prophetic picture. So when I looked at 5780, oh, which was five years ago, four years ago now, whenever I looked into that, I said, well, it's 5780. What is the letter that represents the 80? Because now we are in the decade of the 80s on the Hebrew calendar. Well, the prophetic picture of that, of that letter is pay. That's the numerical one that actually represents the number 80, Sid. And then the prophetic picture is the mouth. And I was like, hey, man, we're entering into you know, the, the, the decade of the pay, the decade of the mouth, the, dec the decade of the breath of God, the voice of God. And immediately the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, they are coming to cover your mouth. And so I began this to- This was before- It was before COVID. People were wearing masks. Yes. You, you see how amazing this is? 
with the use, see these numbers, these letters are the letters that God chose to write the Bible in. And these words are from God. And when you put it together with someone that has the spirit of God, I can't wait to find out some of the things he's found out. But tell me, speaking of uh, the year of the mouth, mm -hmm. tell me about that young girl that couldn't speak. Oh, my goodness. You know, Brother Sid, we have seen so many children that we have rescued. And when I say rescued, I mean to say that we rescued children out of sexual slavery all over the world. We've been doing that now for 30 years. Uh, we just rescued our 11,000th child. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, now sir. that's an accomplishment. It, thank you, sir. And uh, all to the glory of the Lord. But I can tell you that a lot of them are nonverbal because of their trauma. And it's mm. actually fairly common. I'd say maybe one out of every 50 uh, kids that we rescued, they tend to be nonverbal. And that's just a side effect of trauma. It's also a side effect of the demon that has enslaved them. It's to steal their voice. Hmm. And what I, have, what I have seen, brother, uh, over and over again, I have seen God Almighty show up by the power of the Holy Spirit where I've literally looked them in the eyes and said, you know, you can start talking in the name of Jesus and l instantly, instantly, God Almighty healed him. We've seen it in Africa, we've seen it in Mexico, we've seen it down in the Amazon jungle. And we recently rescued a little girl who is completely feral. She was completely nonverbal. I mean, she acted like a savage. I mean, you couldn't be around her. She was very animalistic. Now, well, where was this? What country? This was actually in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And it was on the Amazon River. And the Lord told me if I went down there, and he told me this through a dream, the Lord told me that if I would go down there, that she would be healed and that she would also start talking. And I woke up the next morning. I was actually in Key West, Florida is where I was at. And I told my wife, I got to find a way to make it down there because my team was there. And so I drove over to Miami. My wife said, go. I got on a plane. I went down there, walked straight up to her. I told my team, get ready. And I said, I said, Franciella, she's a nine-year-old little girl, said, just a little bitty thing, just so sweet. And I said, Franciella, come over here. I'm your Papa Troy. Come over here and see me. And she looked at me and I saw this spirit leave her. I saw it. I saw her eyes change and I saw her get up and she smiled and she came running across the room and she hugged me to the amazement of our team. And we got all kinds of pictures of this moment. It was so incredible. And then I told her, you know, it's okay for you to start talking. And instantly she started talking. She was speaking Portuguese. I saw that little girl receive her identity. I saw her receive her voice and I saw her receive Jesus in a moment. What a rewarding <laughs> ministry. How in the world did you get into that? Well, I mean, that is not the normal ministry, rescuing uh, ki uh, kids that have been sold into sexual slavery. That's not one day I, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be a true. doctor. I'm going to be an yeah. accountant. <laughs> you, you don't say, I'm, one day I'm going to grow up and rescue kids from sexual slavery. No, sir. It was Jehovah Sneaky. You know, he Jehovah did Jehovah Sneaky, yes, I haven't sir. heard that name. Yeah, so Jehovah <laughs> Sneaky. Uh, actually, we have a knack for building food banks, and we were building food banks throughout Central America. And while I was in the nation of Costa Rica, I was in the trash dump. We had taken all this food into there. There were all these very impoverished people, and we were taking food to them. While I was there feeding people, a lady came up to me with two little Nicaraguan refugee children, and she said, would you like to buy these two little girls? Oh, well, I didn't understand what she was saying, and I didn't understand that she had profiled me since I was a Caucasian man from the United States of America in a really bad place. She assumed that I was a sexual tourist. Ah. Oh. Okay? And so I said, excuse me? And she said, would you like to buy these children? And then she told me, Sid, she said, she said, you can make a movie. When she said that to me, a horror came upon me, and I wanted to run away, and then instantly the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and I just, I just had a confidence. And I said, yeah, I'll buy them right now. How much? And she, she told me how much. I literally paid money for these two little starving children. Walked over, met my wife. We got in the car and we started talking to these two little girls. And we started saying, you're going to remember this day for the rest of your life. Because Jesus sees you and he loves you so much. He sent me from another part of the world to come here and to get you. And we took them to go eat. We got them into a home. Uh, we took them immediately to the doctor, 
And those girls are now in their 40s now. And those are the first two. And after that, every place we built a food bank, I just started looking and said, and Jesus started bringing me these kids. And it, I couldn't it really isn't natural. It really, you were getting help by the Spirit of God. He was picking kids out and divinely putting you there yes. and connecting the two. It was a great miracle. I, I, I've, I've, never, I've never been able to explain it because it doesn't come from my people. It doesn't come from my, my family. It's just something that God Almighty did. Okay. We are entering the Jewish New Year yes, sir. of 5785. I think our people are on the edge of their seat. I know I am. What does that mean based on your understanding of biblical numbers? Okay, so the number five always represents grace. Okay, so we can expect whenever we first look at five, seven, eight, five, there's two, there's two number fives in there. And that means grace. Now, grace. Double under, grace. Double grace. I like that. Yes, sir. <laughs> So when it comes to the salvation, when it comes to the salvation message, I'm believing that there's more people going to be saved than we've ever seen. But when it comes to the kingdom message, the gospel of the kingdom, I am also believing that there is a God-given grace to overcome things. Because I really think that this is a warfare year. And I think that there is a grace to prosper in the midst of a warfare year. Um, I think that there is a grace from God to be able to stand against great instability and be stable. You know, Sid, any time that you see the letter that indicates the number five, which is hey, okay, so it's the fifth letter. Any time that you see that, you see Yahweh being made manifest because Yahweh, right? So you know how it goes, right? Yahweh. Whenever you spell Yahweh, it has two number fives in it. It has two hays in it. Well, this is the year of the two Hays, five, seven, eight, five. So you can expect God Almighty to show up and give you a grace, just like he did with me in that moment 30 years ago. The grace of God came upon me and, and he said, Troy, this is your ministry. This is what you're going to do. Just exactly like that. When God showed up with his two Hays, he showed up to Sarai and he showed up to Abram and he took his Hay, his number five, and he added that to their names and he changed it from Sarai to Sarah and from Abram to Abraham by simply adding the letter that indicates the number five. He took his two and gave them to Abraham and to Sarah and made them prosperous. Oh, when I start looking at those themes throughout the Word of God, I get so excited. I love the day that we're living in. Now, let me ask you a question. Okay. Uh, you, you, you have a digital book. Uh, which is titled Numbers That Preach, which teach the basic concepts that you've learned over the years. Uh, and we're making this digital book available for a gift of $10 or more. And as a matter of fact, if you uh, uh, just go to our webpage, you can get all the info, sidroth.org forward slash Troy, S-I-D-R-O-T-H dot O-R-G forward slash T-R-O-Y. Um, Troy, if someone were to read your book, let me rephrase it. If you had your book when you first got into oh, this, what wow. difference would it have made? It would have changed everything, absolutely everything. I mean, I, I wrote that book decades ago, and when I first started, I didn't know a single book that was out there that was on this thing. So I had to pour through, you know, and this was also before the Internet. You know, I was saved mm -hmm. in the 80s. And I had to pour through all these things and just look at examples, you know, 153 fish. What are the other examples of 153? What could that possibly mean? When I was looking at, you know, why the three, you know, all these different things of three, all the way through the Word of God, I had to literally search the Scriptures. And every time I read the Scriptures, when I saw a pattern of numbers, I would add them to my notes. So all that's done for you. It's very simple. Um, it's, it's easy to read, it's easy to understand, and it would have changed everything for me. Okay, 5785 yes, sir. is the Jewish New Year. Yes, We're sir. in the Jewish New Year. Yes, sir. Um, uh, because, because it changes on the, on the feast day. Yes. Uh, uh, what I've heard from you so far, it's going to be your double grace. Yes. But double grace because 
it might, you didn't say this, I'm going to say this, it might be double problems yes. that we'll need double grace for. Is that a, a stretch? I'm, I, I don't want to scare anybody because I'm not doom and gloom, but I would say absolutely that is the fact. And also, it is the fact that God is not ever going to invite us into easier again. He's offering better. He's offering transformation, but I don't think he's ever, ever going to offer easier again. The days of easy are behind us. We are looking for Yeshua HaMashiach to come back and he will come back. And in the midst of that, there are times of great trouble, but there's also a grace to prosper. And I want to just, you know, you remember when 2020 happened and how scary that was. The world was shut down. All this mess happened, but the body of Jesus prospered. We truly prospered. Do you know that we saw more people rescued out of sexual slavery in 2020 and 2021 than any other year because they were all quarantined and they are all these children were in these brothels all over the world. They've never been under the same roof and international, international trafficking was shut down. We rescued over 3000 children in 2020 and we, we rescued more than that in 2021. You know what I'm thinking? People are looking at you right now and they're looking at me and they're saying, why is God using that guy? Why is use God using this guy? The reason is because we're normal. Do you know what normal is? It's reading the Bible and saying that is normal. That was the floor of Jesus. He said we will do the same things he's done. That's the floor. And then even greater. I can't, Troy, I can't even comprehend what greater is going to be. I can't either. But... Uh, that was the floor, what were you reading in the New Testament? And where Jesus himself said, you are going to do greater. But I'll tell you what, there comes a point in everyone's life where they have to make Jesus not just their Savior, but their Savior and their Lord. Savior means you're rescued from your sins. Lord means, yes, sir. That's right. And that happened to me. I remember when it happened. And I want to say a prayer with you, and I want you to repeat it out loud with Troy and myself, with you, just you repeat it out loud and mean it's the best of your ability. And I believe God's going to do a supernatural miracle. He's going to get the info that is there that you believe. Maybe you've believed since a child. Maybe you don't even believe yet. And he's going to drop it into your heart, into your spirit. And you are going to be able to do the same things Jesus did and even greater. Repeat this prayer out loud with me. Mean it to the best of your ability. Hey, God is a generous God. All he requires is the best of your ability. He couldn't make it easier. Repeat out loud. And if you have to rededicate your life, good time to say this prayer too. Out loud. Dear God. Dear God. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. For every mistake I've ever made. For every mistake I've ever made. I believe. I believe. Your blood. Your blood. Your precious blood. Your precious blood. There's only one type of blood like your blood. There's only one type of blood like your blood. Washes away every bad thing I've ever done. Washes away every bad thing I have ever done. And I'm clean. And I'm clean. And now that I'm clean. And now that I'm clean. Jesus, come and live inside of me. Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior. I make you my Savior. And my Lord. And my Lord. Amen. Amen. Try tell me more about this Jewish year, 5785. Well, it's the year of Abraham. And I want to just tell you, Abraham is a huge theme this year. And like, why is that? Well, I just, I told you that, you know, he changed his name, Yahweh, Yahweh Vahe, changed his name from Abram to Abraham by literally adding the pay, by adding that, the hay, I should say, not the pay, but the hay. And so it's like, wow. Okay, then, then if you go to a strong, exhaustive concordance, you look up in the Hebrew lexicon, the 85th word in Hebrew is the word Abraham. And this is your 5785. Wow. I know. How did you find that? <laughs> you know, I just looked it up in a song. Okay. <laughs> Anybody can do it. <laughs> and so it's there. And wow, there it is. It's 85. And it's like, okay, so what is Abraham the father of? First of all, Abraham is the father of the Jewish nation and the Jewish people. And this is very important. Sid, we have to pass the test of standing with Israel. 
Now, I know that you know that, and I know that many of your, many of your people know that. Look, I'm 100% Jew, uh, a Gentile. I thought it would spike secret Jewish because I love Israel so much. I'm 100%. And well, look. Whether it does or not, you've got the king That's of the right. Jews living inside of you. You can't get better that than that, Troy. You cannot. <laughs> I cannot, brother. So I stand with Israel because I stand with Jesus. I stand with Israel because I stand with the Word of God. Jesus loves Israel so much, He's coming back with the church for the defense of Israel. And I tell you, I'm going to stand with Jesus. We have to pass that test. Well, why right now, and, and you know this, and you know this, why, Troy, right now, the college kids have found one thing to protest mm -hmm. against, Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems as though this anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish sentiment has been increasing. Why do you think it's increasing so much now? Because the spirit of Antichrist is increasing within this world. It literally is the spirit of Antichrist. You know, when I was in, I was in Washington, D.C. recently speaking to Congress upon behalf of children all over the world. While I was there, more than 10,000 Palestinian protesters and haters of Israel came into the Washington Mall while I was there. And I saw the, the, the words and the chance of death. And I also saw the horrible destruction that they did. I literally saw it with my own two eyes. There was such a bad spirit that goes with it. It comes from our college campuses because we turned the education of our children over to that antichrist spirit. And now we got to take it back. We have to be involved as fathers, as mothers, as grandfathers, as grandmothers, and we have to take the responsibility of raising our children in the admonition of the Lord. And if we don't, these jokers are happy to come after our kids and happy to flip their hearts to actually hate Israel. I would have never imagined the day that I would see in the United States of America where people would chant death to Israel in broad daylight by the tens of thousands. Okay, well, Sid, where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. Hey, does much more abound. The five does much more abound. And I think that uh, what, what we're going to see this year is we are going to see a turnaround of Israel. We've actually already begun to see it from the defensive posture to the offensive posture and the spirit of the Lord moving from defensive, uh, God Almighty telling the people of Israel and telling Christians, I need you to stand, I need you to stand, to now he's saying, I need you to go, I need you to move forward. I think that we will see a tremendous, I don't know, real estate increase this year concerning all things Israel. Explain what you mean, Barry by real estate increase this year? I think um, among the nations, a greater voice, a greater real estate. I also think too that there's a lot of disputed, you know, nobody in the world disputes that if a nation is invaded by another nation, that they're not allowed to fight back and to take back the territory that they have taken, except for Israel. We, no one cares of any planet on the planet Earth, I should say any nation on the planet Earth, that they do this. Yeah, you know, if Israel these, is, is, is held to different Troy, state. if these kids are looking for something to protest, why don't you look at the fairness? I'm a person that looks for justice. I don't know, my DNA is that yeah, way. Me too. And now, and now that the Messiah of Israel lives inside of me, it's even amplified. I want justice in my life, in my family's yes. life, in the world's life. Yes. Why are these kids who are looking for a cause standing up for injustice? Does that prove there's a devil or what? Yes, yes. It just goes to show, you know, the level of deceiving that has taken place. And it also goes to show as well the level of rebellion that is with this spirit. So when I, look at, when I look at this whole thing, what I see is not a movement of justice, but a, a movement of chaos and disorder and actually murder to actually chant on October 7th and say, we're so happy about October 7th. Do you know that last year, 5,784, I looked up the 5,784th verse in the Word of God. Hmm. And I want to tell you what it is, because this is going to blow that, your mind. That was the last Jewish... Uh, new Year, because it's 5785 now. That was last year. Go ahead. So this was 21 days 
Rosh Hashanah happened 21 days before October 7th. And the 5,784th verse in the Bible is Deuteronomy 32, verse 25. In the street, the sword will make them childless. In their homes, terror will reign. The young men and the young women will perish, the infants and those with gray hair. Hmm. That is like the perfect description of October 7th. And we looked that up and we prophesied this on 5,784 on, Ra on Rosh Hashanah. I'm not saying, of course, that God Almighty had anything to do with any of this. What I'm saying is that His Word is sovereign and His Word is prophetic. And He knew that we would need to be able to stand up on the Word of God. Because the next verse, which we have now entered into, says, and they will be removed from memory, talking about the enemies. Wow. Yes, sir. I so, like that. I, I, how's that going to apply? I don't want to get too specific, but how's that apply to the United States of America mm. this new year? How does, how does this, is it, are, are you saying this double grace is going to cause perhaps, perhaps the great harvest that everyone's looking for? Well, let it be. I, I really and truly believe that there's a great last breath for the United States. My good friend Joseph Z believes that. He and I talk about it all the time. Me and Alan DeDio talk about it all the time. We really believe that there is one more great last breath in this decade of the pay and in this year of the hay, which also represents the breath of God. I think that there's a great time of refreshing. So when you're saying breath, that's his way and God's way of saying one last move Come on. of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. The breath of God, the yes. Spirit of God, the wind of God. That's so true, brother. And isn't it amazing because the pay is the mouth and the hay or the five. So the 80, the pay is the mouth. The hay or the five is the breath. So you have the mouth and the breath. So you have, you have the picture of resuscitation. Amen. And I'm holding on to that promise. I'm believing God for that. Well, I, I feel any second now Come on. that this glory, Amen. and the Bible calls it a glory greater than the world has ever yes, seen. Sir. So I've called it the greater glory mm, that's good. is what you're describing. And when this, look, I think the world has, it, it is in such a mess right now that nothing short of the breath of God is going to change things. And I'm so grateful that I have supernatural insight called the Word of God, the Bible. And we're about ready to see, I believe, the greatest move of God's Spirit in history. In fact, I'll go so far, Troy, as to say if we take all the great moves of God Come on, brother. and put them together, mm what is coming, it's going to take it. It's going to be greater. It's the greater glory. So whereas people are very pessimistic on the things they're seeing, mm -hmm. even with their families, yes, sir. Uh, even, even in this nation and politics and every, ev everything else, I believe that if I could have picked one generation to be part of, it's the one with the greater breath. Amen. It's the one with the greater glory. That's good. It's this generation. Troy, I want you to dig deep, okay. look in the camera, All right. and give a word to everyone viewing us right now. All right, sir. Friends, I want to encourage you with this word because if Abraham is the theme, and I believe that I've already showed you that it is, through it being the 85 and Abraham being the 85th in a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, the two Hays or the two fives, the, 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 the name change from Abram to Abraham, if, if all of that is true, and it is, all that is true biblically, I also believe that it's true prophetically because the way that the Bible is written is also written to be prophetic. Jesus himself actually said that not one single dotting of the I or crossing of the T or as the Bible puts it, jot or tittle. It says every single jot or tittle must be fulfilled, which means, friends, it prophesies. If, if the prophecy has to be fulfilled, then the way it is written actually prophesies. And that so encourages me. So in this year of the Abraham theme, remember, he is the father of Israel. 
And so that means that when we look at Father Abraham, friends, this is a tremendous year for Israel and the warfare that is against her. And uh, and it, it may very well depend upon how we stand with Israel for the wars that come in the future. And we want to pass that test. Secondly, my friends, I want to encourage you and say this, that he is also the father of faith. The Bible says in the book of Galatians, and I love this verse, he says this in Galatians 3, 7, it says, understand, I mean, how plain is this? Understand then that those who have faith are the children of Abraham. Mm. Wow. So this is a year of God Almighty rising up your faith. And we know that faith comes by hearing God speak. We know that Abraham heard God, Abram, Abram, come out of your father's house into another place that I'll show you. This is a year that God Almighty is telling us and calling us out of things and telling us, I need you to have a greater value for my voice and I need you to increase within your faith. And then finally, Brother Sid just now mentioned the fear and the terrible things that have taken place concerning our families. Abraham is all about families. Abraham is father Abraham, and I believe that he is the father of godly families. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 2, and I mean, you guys know this, 1, 2, 3, you quote that, Genesis 12, 3, and anytime you see 1, 2, 3, you see progression. You see outer court, inner court, most holy place, right? You see Egypt, the wilderness, and the promised land, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, all those different things. It's like, how do you go all the way? But don't miss this part because it says in you, all the people of the earth shall be blessed. And another way to translate the peoples means the families. I believe that there's a special blessing for families this year. The horror and the hell that has come against your family, your children, your grandchildren. God Almighty says that there is a special grace that is for you, even in the midst of terrible warfare. Psalms 18 is a key chapter for me this year. And I want to encourage you, friends, to know Psalms 18 and to know how God Almighty stands and what our posture is in the midst of terrible warfare because God has a grace and there is a God-given ability, a God-given ability to overcome. So don't miss that grace. It's all about the grace of God. The grace of God is God-given. It literally means to be empowered by God, by Yahweh Himself, by King Jesus Himself, in order for us to be able to look at something and say, back off, devil. I think that this is a tremendous year for that. I I want to summarize what I've heard you say. It's found in Psalm 122. Come on. Verse 6. God commands you, Mm. pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thou shalt prosper that love thee. Now, an interesting thing is if you write Jerusalem in English, guess what you have in the center of Jerusalem? USA. <laughs> there is a God-given linkage between Jerusalem and the USA, and for the USA to be at its strongest and best and blessed by God, then Israel has to be at its strongest and best and blessed by God. And we're about ready to see this great outpouring of God's Spirit because in the midst of the bad, according to the year that we're living in, there is a double, a double grace. Yes, sir. I mean, grace is good. How about a double grace? I, I hate to do this because the the presence of God is so strong, Troy, but yeah. any last thing you want to say? I would, I would say this, sir, that, the, that we, have to live in this, we have to live in this moment right now, and we have to accept the responsibility of this, and we cannot be fearful of the future, and we cannot be pining for the good old days that are way behind us. The Lord is wanting us to pay attention to this season right now, this Kronos, this Kairos moment in the midst of the Kronos. And you know those Greek words, meaning how time works and then special moments. A special moment is called a Kairos moment. And when the Bible says redeeming the time because the days are evil, it means redeeming the Kairos or the special moments. This is a moment of opportunity. This is a special moment of opportunity from heaven, and we don't want to miss this. And we can miss it by either being afraid of the future or wishing that we lived back in the 1980s or the 1970s. You know, I saw the movie Reagan the other day, and I loved it. I loved it. I actually cried and went, oh, 
I miss those days. And the Lord told me, stop that and be a leader. That's what he told me. I like that word. Stop it. That's right. And be a leader. Yes, sir. And the blessings of God, the glory of God overtake you. Amen.